William Browder's firm was once the largest investor in Russia with four billion dollars in the country. Today, zero. He is accusing the Russian government of stealing his companies and his money. Now he's mounting a vigorous campaign on YouTube, of all places, to get around Russian media and tell the story. On June the 4th. 2007, Lieutenant Colonel Kuznetsov led a team of 25 officers in a raid on the Hermitage Moscow offices, taking servers, computers, and documents. The official reason he gave for this raid was that one of the Hermitage companies, Khmer, had supposedly underpaid dividend withholding tax. Wow. William Browder joins me now, CEO of Hermitage Capital Management. He is joining us from London. Bill, it is nice to have you back on the program. Welcome. Great to see you. I How think you? I told you to write a book about this years ago. Now, you and Hermitage <laughs> Capital are accusing the Russian government of stealing $230 million and your businesses. Can you explain briefly to us what happened exactly? Sure. Um, very simply, um, back in 2007, uh, the police raided our offices, took away all of our corporate documents for our Russian companies, and then all of a sudden those documents were used to steal our companies. Then in a very complicated scheme, they then used those companies to apply for a tax refund to get back $230 million of taxes that we had paid two years earlier. So they didn't steal the money from me, but they stole it from themselves, essentially, from the Russian government, which is the most amazing thing. So you think that they, it's really at the top of government that's doing this, that, that government officials uh, are, are, I mean, Hermitage was once the biggest investor in Russia with $4 billion under management. You're suspecting that the highest levels of government are involved. Well, I, the, the thing that, that makes me think that is that the, the, the $230 million tax refund that these criminals got was, was given to them in two days after they applied for it. So, uh, you know, wh wh how can you get a $230 million tax refund unless you've got someone real high up covering for you? And so um, it, it, this is one of these things that, that's so amazing, uh, it, it, you can't even imagine it. And, um, and so we made a YouTube video to try to get the story out because none of the Russian papers were, they, they were all too scared to write about it. Are you scared? I mean, do you fear for your own life? Well, I'll tell you what happened was we, uh, after we discovered this whole thing, we ended up um, hiring four different law firms to help us get through it and, and figure out what was going on and, and uh, criminal complaints. And you know what the, 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 the Russian police did? The police were involved in the crime. They went out and tried to arrest all the lawyers. I had to get most of them out of the country, but one of them wasn't lucky enough, and he's been sitting in jail now for 11 months, a 35-year-old father of two, Sergei Magnitsky, sitting in jail because he had the audacity to testify against the police in Russia. Wow. And, and you know, the, there are other stories, of course, that we've that we've heard about and that we've reported on. The Russian Interior Ministry asked Interpol to put you on their wanted list, correct? <laughs> well, they, they, they keep on saying that. They said it 18 months ago. Russia is one of the only countries where they make announcements like that that aren't true. They said it 18 months ago. Never happened. They made the same announcement last week. Everyone got all, all hot and bothered, but um, so far it hasn't happened. And I'll tell you one other thing is that Interpol won't listen to their request because it's a, cor a corrupt and politically motivated request. But, but seriously, Bill, I mean, where are you going with this? I mean, if you're fighting Putin and Medvedev and the Russian government, wh what kind of impact do you think you're going to have? Well, I'm not fighting Putin and Medvedev. I'm fighting criminals in Russia who stole a bunch of money, arrested my lawyers, and keep on making all these crazy statements about me and all my colleagues. And so where do I hope to go with this? I I'm hopeful that, that if you shine a bright light on bad things, then the bad things stop. And I I've had a, a whole career of doing that in Russia before they, they kicked me out. Uh, we were a big activist trying to fight corruption at Gazprom and other companies. And whenever we'd shine the light bright enough, it would stop. And, I and I'm hopeful that, that uh, transparency is the best disinfectant. And so that's why I'm talking about it tonight, and that's why we did the YouTube video, and yep. that's why we'll keep on exposing more and more. In the meantime, where are you going to be investing? Well, you know, the, the world is, is actually a very hospitable place now that you have 0% interest rates, and, and emerging markets is what my specialty is. And so we, we, we're, we're investing in, in all sorts of places. We're investing in India and Brazil and, and the right. Middle East and... and uh, and it's all going pretty well at the moment. Bill, we so appreciate you talking with us about this. This is an incredible story. I hope you'll come back, and, and, and I'd like to do a lot more on it uh, with a longer segment. We appreciate it, Bill. Thank you so much for telling us about yeah. it.